Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. My name is Joe Rabel. I'm with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, if you're new to the show, what I do here is I take in stock requests each week, symbols come through, and then I'll go through and analyze them. And I do the bulk of the show is going through those. While I'm analyzing them, I'm giving you kind of my way of going about analyzing them. Uh, and and I'll, I'll touch on moving averages. I'll touch on uh, MACD, I'll touch on ADX, uh, look at volume, uh, but I do like to focus on di- on price action. And so uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to give you a little bit more insight, and I want to build on last week's lesson. And so what I, what I want to do is give you a little bit more detail into how I would go about looking for entry depending on my own personality. So uh, let's get into the agenda and so you have to know yourself if, as a trader and you have to figure out whether you're comfortable being in a position at a, at a break even or a loss, like something that might take a little time to get going. That, that type of entry, you can be a little bit more aggressive and maybe get in a little bit earlier. If you're uncomfortable being in something, you get jittery if something isn't moving right away, then you're going to probably need to have a little bit more confirmation in your entry. So I'm going to go through that in a little bit more detail. But there are about two to three different chances for each stock, typically, when you're using the two time frames the way that I suggest. Um, and then uh, lastly, I do think it's important to look at MACD and ADX and volume to help you with the confirmation uh, of your uh, entries and which ones have the highest probability of kind of kicking the price into gear right away. Um, and then when we're done with that, we're going to go through the uh, stock requests that came through. So let's go ahead and get into this lesson. And I want to start with last week where I talked about the two time frames, and I have an 18 month here, but this could be any two time frames, any two 18 MAs. We've got the 18 month showing a shift in trend back to the upside and going into a stage two uptrend. And then we're looking for a match where the weekly is doing the same thing. I did touch on the fact that you could buy at the one on the weekly chart, if we have a two on the monthly, if you know the fundamentals and you really kind of want to be in a little bit early. I'm going to get into that a little bit more in depth today. Um, But let's go ahead and give you the example. So I'm going to use the same one as last week. I just think this is simple. I I I don't think I need to change anything. Um, And what I want to show here is, so we're in a stage two uptrend on the monthly. We've got a rising 18 month above a rising 40 here. We've got really good ADX condition in place. You see how the ADX, the blue line, rallied up to about 40, 42, uh, maybe even a little bit 45, something like that. And during this pullback, this correction, it stayed above 25. Now, it doesn't have to do that. If it makes a peak above 30, it can come down underneath uh, 25 a little bit. That's no big deal. Uh, But it's even stronger when it holds up into the 25, above 25, 30, 35, like this. Uh, so that's kind of the condition I'm looking for in the higher time frame. Strong move to the upside, and then we get a pullback, and ADX is confirming. So once I have that and I'm sitting at or near the 18-month line, I want to go down to the smaller time frame and, again, look for that match where the 18, if you notice, here's the 18 starting to decline. And then it's falling, 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 and now it turns to the upside. And really what I like to find, my favorite entry typically is this first pullback to a rising 18 on the smaller time frame. Now I have a pullback to this time frame and a pullback to this time frame taking place at the same time. And uh, if you can find that on two consecutive time frames with confirming momentum conditions, Um, I think that's a really good way to look at it. Now, what I want to do is talk about the shift in trend that takes place using the price action. So if I'm looking at this chart, I can see that once this stock made a low and then it made a lower high and a lower low, you see how this went to a lower low? Now I can draw the trend line in and I draw the trend line down through this prior peak. And um, I've got this trend line in place. Now, when you break the trend line, what I do is I start to analyze what's going on down here. Okay. The positive about this setup in the break of the trend line is that we don't have any real strength in the negative DI. You see how negative DI didn't get above 25? No real strength in the sellers here. So my bias is that this stock is going up. 
Okay, so I'm looking for an entry. But I do notice when that trend line was broken that and if you think about it, if we look at it here, let's just look at the timing of that. It's right in this area. The MACD had overrun. Both the signal line and the MACD had overrun its zero line. So if that happens, I tend to be a little bit more patient. I don't necessarily want to just dive in uh, the moment it breaks the trend line. Um, now, if you have, if you don't want to miss this, if you don't want to miss this trade, you know this company and you don't mind sitting around in it for a little while. Could be a couple weeks, could be a couple months before it really gets to get, get going. Then you can buy that. And then you have to use a stop down underneath the 18 month and below the last pullback low. So there's nothing wrong with buying here on this trend line break if you have the patience and you're willing to give it some room underneath this low. It's just I'm looking at the MACD and trying to improve my timing on the lower time frame. So what I would prefer to do is let it come up and then look for the two. So if... Um, if the break of the trend line is one, two is the test of the low. Now at two, my antenna is going up. I'm looking to see what is going on. Is the MACD holding up? MACD is holding up pretty well. Um, and, and again, I still have a really good reason to be here based on the higher time frame. Um, now, depending on how this plays out, coming up off the two, I could be willing to go down to a, a daily time frame. I'm not going to show that today, but I could go down to the daily time frame and I, I've got a pullback taking place on the weekly and look for an entry pattern that's taking place on the daily chart. Just based on how this has gone sideways for four or five weeks, it's probably a low ADX breakout play coming up through 60 uh, on the daily chart. So you could look at something like that if you want, but I'm just going to stick with the two time frames. So the two coming back up after you've tested so we went into the zone between the 18 and the 40 and then that was the break of the that was the break of the trend line and then we come back and test if we come back up through the 18 after that that would be kind of like your next entry point a little bit more on the aggressive side uh, because we don't have full confirmation that the trend has shifted the trend shifts when we come back up through this three so if we have a one is a break of the trend line, two is the test, three is the shift in trend or the highest probability that we have a change in trend to the upside. Where we get confirmation of that is the next test, make another higher low and then another higher high. And then coming up through 70 is your actual confirmation that the trend has shifted back to the upside. So typically what I'm trying to do is ascertain where is the best entry for me and I kind of shift and I and I've said this from get-go from the moment I started doing YouTube two years ago uh, my invest like a pro channel the first videos that I said is that the higher time frame it remains pretty consistent where trading gets difficult is that you can't define in advance what the proper entry is using the trigger. You have to analyze what's taking place. And that's why it's so hard. Everybody wants the same trigger every single time. And it just doesn't work like that. The, the, you have to analyze how it came in and then figure out which is the best trigger. So I would sit here and say, you know, this is one chance. This is a second chance. And really it's here. The two is coming up back up through the 18. Three would be literally the three coming back up through this high and just buying here. Now, a point of reference, if I've gone up, I was up this week, up this week, up this week, and then the fourth week is breaking the three, I'm not as interested in taking that trade. I'm probably going to buy the next pullback. Now we're back to where we were last week. And this is why this is such a great reference point. If we can get a pullback in this time frame and the first pullback to the 18 on the lower time frame, in many cases, we're buying the first pullback after a new trend. But you want to reference what's going on based on the price action. You want to know where the trend line break is. You want to know whether you've had a test. You want to know whether you've gone in the zone between the 18 and the 40 and then come back out. All of these will help with this entry that I'm talking about. Uh, on this pullback to the 18 and give you a lot more confidence whether you want to do it there, whether you want to do it off the two, whether we want to come right up through here and buy. And then if the MACD, if MACD is just coming down to the zero line this like that and we have low ADX condition, you want to buy the trend line break 
because in a lot of cases, you're just going to keep going right after that. When you don't have a lot of overrun in MACD, you can be a lot more aggressive. So use your personality to define this. I mean, for me, I like somewhere in here. I like some kind of, you know, a little bit more confirmation. Um, I don't like to jump in and jump out anymore. I mean, I used to get in and then if it didn't go, I'd get right out and I'd be really using tight stops and takes a, take a lot of small dinky break-evens and, and small losses. And I'd, I'd probably make a little bit more money, but it was a lot more work. So now I really like to get a little bit more confirmation by that first pullback here or the lift off here. Um, and in some cases, I'll let it break out because I want the confirmation that I know this is getting back in line with this time frame, and I don't have to wait around to see it work. Um, and then from that point, um, you know, you want to use price lows as your stops. Okay. Don't use the moving averages. If you notice, if you use the 40, that's declining at the beginning of this trade and then it turns up. But the moving averages can get nicked and then you can turn back up. I like to use price lows. Use these key reversal points as your stops. Um, and uh, I think that'll help you a lot. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get going into the uh, stocks that came through. Before we get into the stocks, my research can be found at rablestockresearch.com. I send out about two to three reports each week, plus I do a special video for the individual package, giving them some insight into what I'm seeing in the stocks that I'm recommending. Uh, and if you're interested in trying that service, you can use a coupon code STOCKTALK and get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into the individual stocks now. Okay, so as we get into the stocks, I just thought I'd mention, I know I took a few extra minutes on the lesson, but I thought it was important to kind of go through some of the things that I've taught, uh, you know, several weeks back at the beginning when the show just started, uh, just felt like it was important to kind of bring it all together. Uh, okay, so let's look at this AOSL. So, uh, I mean, if we want to look at this and, and what I like to do, if I pull up a stock, I do like to look at where is the last really high quality setup. And look at this. This is exactly what I was just describing um, in the lesson. I mean, what I'm looking for. Look at this zero line reversal. Look at this low ADX. Look at this quality, low volatility turnaround. Uh, ended up with a pinch right here, right before it took off. You see how the 18's cupping around right here? I mean, so we've got kind of both both of these setting up in a really quality way. And what I, what I think is important to recognize in a stock like this is look at the volatility. Look at the difference between that and this. I mean, these are these bars aren't that big. Look at the size of these bars. I, I just don't think, I'm not saying that this didn't show signs of a buying setup, but the quality of it just wasn't as good in my view. Um, and it was a, a lot more volatility associated with it. And it had kind of a ratchety look to it the way it came in, rallied up, came down, boom, like this. I mean, so, um, and then what ended up happening is this tried to break out and failed very quickly. Um, one of the things I would tell you is that when you see a stock that is working sideways like this and it tries to break out and by the end of the day, it gives it up, that's telling you that, that that's a failed breakout and that there's a very high probability we're going to work our way back down into bigger support. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, everybody's got different um, risk tolerances, but I think it's important to realize what the market is telling you when that happens. Um, okay, so Starbucks. So the thing about Starbucks that that bugs me here is that um, we had such a deep pullback. I mean, it, originally I was thinking that this was going to come in and find support right in this range here. And um, there was a pretty good reversal here. There's a nice breakout from here. And look at how it just overran that. It just didn't find support. So now I would actually assume that that area is going to be resistance on the next rally. So, you know, somewhere in the mid to high 80s is where I would be expecting resistance on this rally because it, it does look like it wants to rally up. By the way, I am running the new version of uh, ACP that just came out today, I believe. And uh, you have the earnings on here now. It's nice to see that because it, it'll show you when the next earnings is coming up. Uh, so I find that to be pretty valuable. Um, okay, let's go to the uh, MS. So Morgan Stanley, so this one is not bad. I mean, we've come into the 18 month, that line is still rising. We've got a little bit of overrun in the MACD. You see how the MACD is overrunning the uh, signal line and you're stretched away from the 18 month. So what this tells me is when you have strong ADX and this happens on the MACD is that this probably 
is not going straight up. You're not going to rally off this and go up. You're going to go up and maybe go sideways and channel for a little bit before this is ready to do anything meaningful. So that's kind of where I am with this. Now, if it comes firing up through 95, then we've got to give this some credit, especially if there's price and volume associated with it and we get green DI going again. But until that happens, I don't, I just don't see, you know, the reason to really jump in. Now, at the same time, if I'm in this, I'd probably stick around because it does look like it's respecting the 18 month line. So Caterpillar, now this is what we're looking for. Look at the reversal. You see how this came down? Um, it didn't quite reach the big support area at 175, but look at what it did. It undercut this low and then on a dime reversed and reversed with a vengeance. So that's a really strong sign, in my opinion, uh, the way this has played out. Now I'm looking to see, you know, I'd actually like to see this consolidate a little bit more and it might not. It might want to go ahead and, and rally from here and just kind of take off. Um, I think if I were going to buy this, I'd want to give it some room. Even if I did it on the daily, I think I'd want to give it a little bit of room um, because I don't know if this is really ready to break out through this kind of violent decline. So um, I would be watching the weekly chart. And if it just walks along here for another week or two without pulling back, then I'd probably think I'd be thinking I'd want to play it to the upside. But I think the reversal was pretty impressive. Now, on the other side of the equation, we've got weakness here. I mean, look at what um, this stock is doing. It's not holding the 18-month line. MACD is turning down. Now, going into this, we had pretty good ADX, but notice what happened. And I, I like to point these things out. You see the first pullback to the 18-month? That caused a whole new high. I mean, that was based on how strong the momentum was. Then we made a new peak. And Green DI did not make a new high, and actually ADX didn't either. Um, that's not as big a deal, but what bothers me is now we've come down really hard, back down through 100. Um, it didn't find support at the 18-month, and the MACD has rolled over now. So um, I'm leaning towards this being a pretty big breakdown. Look at what the relative strength line is doing. See how this was making higher highs and higher lows, and then on this peak, we did not confirm. The market basically pulled this up is what this is telling us, because this is really uh, a rally up that was a pretty big divergence. Now we're hitting a lower low for the first time in a year or two on a relative basis. And I just think that this is probably not a stock you want to be focusing your efforts on. OK, let's look at Pfizer. I had a question on um, you know, this pullback. If the 18, month, 18 week is rising, can you take a trade on the daily? The answer is yes. But what I, what I suggest is, you have to watch the slope of this line. If you notice the slope here, I mean, it looks like a straight line. And then right about in here, it starts to lose a little bit of slope right in this range right here. So if the daily triggers a little bit on the later side, then I would be, I'd just continue to watch and see if this starts to look like it's starting to lose slope, then you have to assume that it's probably going to be more like a trading range here. So, um, uh, the, 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 so the answer is yes, but I, what I'll tell you is this, if you get a deep overrun and you go all the way down to the 40 and there's some separation like this, I think you have to recognize that there's going to be resistance at the midpoint of this rally. So if you take the high and the low, look at the midpoint, that's about real, really, really where it rallied to. So I think... Um, it's always smart to keep an eye. If this line is rising, you can play this trade. But what this will do, um, based on how it pulled back, it'll tell you how much upside you have. Okay, so the breakout in Deer, I mean, I think that was a pretty good breakout. What I don't like is this uh, gap down that took place, but that's all taking place above the breakout level. So I think as long as this holds above 400, this is in pretty good shape. I have no problem holding this stock whatsoever. I think this is a pretty good quality setup. Um, the gap down might have me thinking, you know, maybe I should give this a little bit of time just to sort of prove that it's not going to re-enter. Uh, but big base, great relative performer. Overall pattern is really good. Look at the ADX here, low ADX on the sell-off. Uh, very good quality looking pattern. So uh, SPLK. So, you know, I mean, I think... Um, when I'm looking at a stock like this, and the question was, they, they basically said, you know, I know this isn't a great looking pattern, but um, it might be helpful to recognize what I'm looking for to see real improvement. So it really depends on your time frame, because if I wanted to trade this, if I want to look at this as a trading play, we've got a setup going on on the daily. 
I mean, this is a pretty nice little pattern. If this can pull back a little bit, the real resistance here, I think, is, you know, look at this gap down. You're coming into some resistance, probably 150 to 160. If you get a little move down here, you could play this for a trading play on a daily chart. But if I'm looking at it from a bigger picture, I don't like this declining 18 month line. And we need to work through this line before I'm looking to do anything. Like if I'm looking for a meaningful move and I want to play this because I like the company and I think it's going to go up for the next year or two, we have to work through this 18 month line. And that's going to probably take six months is my guess. I mean, we could push up and then come back down. And it's probably going to take some time before we really see the type of improvement that can turn this into a trend to the upside. So it is important to watch how the short-term trading action, if we see in volume improvement and everything, then this pattern of getting through the 18 month, might, it might not take as long. Okay, uh, Astronics here, A-T-R-O. So um, we always start with the longer term time frame. We're coming into some pretty big support. We've had the 18 month declining and now it's starting to turn around. We do have MACD holding here. I mean, we don't have any sign of real buying based on the ADX. We don't have any real sign of buying based on the ADX here. You see the green DI isn't going anywhere. MACD is still below um, the, the zero line on the weekly. So um, I'm looking for a little strength here. If we get a little bit of strength to the upside, um, then I think I'd give this a little bit more credit and I, I'd, have the, I'd have a little bit more interest in playing this. If I'm going to play this and if I wanted to do this off the daily based on what Green DI is doing, you draw your trend line in here and you look for a breakout to the upside and then you play it for a move up into the higher teens. That's about all I would be willing to do. We do have a declining 40 month here that's probably going to act as resistance. Air transport services. Now, this is a pattern that I think looks pretty good. We, we held the 18-month. Uh, we have a rising 18-month and a rising 40 on the, uh, on the monthly chart, right? And then the weekly chart um, had a pretty nice breakout. And look at the uh, green DI showing improvement. Look at the rising uh, ADX line and look at the volume. So the way I like to do this, I like to go back and say, well, what happened? What happened was we had our one, two, three. We broke the trend line, this trend line from here. We came back and tested, and then we took out this high up here. So um, I think we've turned the trend to the upside. What's missing now is we're, we're stretched away from this 18 week line. We need a pullback. We need to get this a little closer and that would set up the next buying opportunity. Now on the pullback, we want to look at the quality of that. And we also want to see how this handles this prior uh, breakout area. I mean, we don't want to see a violent move back through the breakout area. So those are the types of things I think I'd be on the lookout for, but this is one I, I would consider to keep an eye on. WSP Global. So this is on the Toronto exchange. So, um, We've got a stock on the monthly chart that's starting to pull back. Now, it hasn't reached all the way back to the 18-month, but it's gotten close enough. Um, the eight, the uh, ADX has turned down, uh, and uh, MACD looks like it's coming in towards the signal line, but it's pretty stretched away from the, uh, from the zero line. So overall, I'm okay with what's going on on the monthly. If we look at this and we say we're pulling in on this time frame, we have a rising 18-month here, right? But look at what's going on on the weekly. We have a declining 18. It was rising and now it's declining. I don't think there's anything to do until we get through this 18 week. And it can play out in one of two ways. It looks like it's failing here and then it could come back up while the 18 is starting to kind of cup around. And then this next move up, it's almost like a double top here. So if this is a top and then we pull back and then we work our way back up through this 175 area, that would be a buy. If it pushes through now, then we want to look for the first pullback while the 18 is cupping around. Those are the two things that I would be on the lookout for. I just think it's a little, I know we have a zero line reversal potential. It just looks a little too early to me. And it looks like it needs a little bit more time uh, to cup around in some way, shape or form. I don't think this daily chart is going to kick this into gear right this second. So, you know, just kind of be aware of that. Um, Baba. Uh, I do think Baba had some climatic activity down at the bottom. So let's just look at this daily chart. Look at the volume action. You see how this had this big move to the downside on heavy volume, and then we had massive volume bottom. Um, I, I, you know, I think that was a climax. That was what I'd call a selling climax down there. Pretty big reversal bar. We're actually forming a reversal bar on the monthly chart. Um, yeah, I got really stretched away. Look at the decline from 300 straight down under 100 
without any interruption whatsoever. Now we're coming back to some support. Um, pretty good chance this is making a low. Now, I think what's important is we're making a low, but we're not turning up. We have to go through that basing stage or some form of that, I think, over the next few months before this is really going to be ready to get anything going. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you have an interest in having uh, your stocks analyzed by me, uh, go ahead and send the symbols to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.